This is Rob Tubber for ID Boxing. Delighted to be joined by Shane McGuigan. We're here at the Azim Charlton weigh-in at Ali Pali. How are you, Shane? Good, thank you, mate. Good. So, talk to us about Adam Azim versus Ryan and Charlton. First things first, Adam looked in, in pretty good nick up there at 140 pounds. I know we've uh, we've discussed in the past whether or not it's going to be lightweight, super lightweight. Obviously, kind of got the frame to go up higher than that. But how was he at the weight? Yeah, he could. He does it really easy. I mean... Um he didn't even have to do much training at all to get down to the weight. So um, at the moment, he could definitely do lightweight. It's just whether we we sort of cement him at that weight in, for the next year and a half, and then he's completely outgrowing it. So um, yeah, we'll just we'll just play it by ear. We'll see if we do another four four fights at this weight, and then you know if he's still making it as comfortable as he is now, then we'll uh, probably go down. But for now, we'll we'll, we'll stay at 140. Sam Gilly on this card, somebody who's been sharing the rounds with Adam Azim in preparation. Good work for Adam in the build-up to this? Yep, Sam's a good fighter. Uh, he's done some work with uh, Adam and Hassan. And Hassan's also boxed another, been sparring another guy called George Mitchell, who's on the card as well. He's good. He's a middleweight, potentially super middleweight, but he's quite young as well, so he might go up. Um, so yeah, both of the boys have had great, great preparation with guys that are on the show. So, uh, And Daniel's also been sparring big Jamie TKV, so plenty of rounds. Ryan Charlton's been full of beans this week. He's had a he's had a few spicy comments in the last couple of days. Um, yeah, wasn't necessarily expecting that. Usually quite a um, I don't know. Not that he's been disrespectful, but he's been piping up on one or two things, talking about the sparring and Adam. It's it's man versus boy. I think is a uh, is one of the th ones that that popped out to me. Any thoughts on that? You can say that, and that's the way you know he's got he's got to approach it. He's got to approach it that he's seasoned. He's the guy that's had got all the experience. He's the guy that's got the strength. I mean. If it was a bodybuilding contest, he's winning it. Uh, if it was a strength contest, probably underneath a, a weighted bar or something like that, he's probably winning it as well. But it's a boxing contest. It's a skill contest. Um, speed is what's going to win this fight. Um, but he's also, you cannot discredit what he's done. I mean, he's taken some fights that he probably shouldn't have taken, but he needed to take take them, like the Marku fight up at welterweight. Um to sort of get himself an opportunity, you know, he, he gave a great account of himself. He's went skipped two weight divisions down to to go down to lightweight. He lo lost to Luke Willis, but pushed him the whole way and got outboxed, didn't get hurt at all, um, and then went in a tournament. I think that was the worst move he could have done is going into a tournament because he isn't a three round fight. He's more of a guy that's going to press the press the uh, fight and the pace as, as the rounds go on, and he'll kind of he's tough enough to take you into deep waters. Um, and that's why him going into that tournament was just a bad decision. Um, but maybe made a few killed out of it, I'm not too sure. But this fight, for us, we have to be aware that he has the strength, he has the the durability to push us late. Um, you know, we, we obviously, I know that if Adam catches anybody on the chin at 135 or 140 pounds and he hits them right, they're going to go to sleep. Um, but he's got a knack of getting through rounds rather than Charlton. So, you know, we're obviously preparing for a uh, for a long fight. But look, as I said, him piping up, I don't think it's... I think he genuinely believes it. And he has to... What's the point of being in a sport of taking fights like that if you don't believe you can win? Um, but I know what's going to be the result. Everybody seems to be kind of eagerly anticipating Adam taking a clean shot in eight-ounce gloves. Is that a box that... I mean, obviously, as his trainer, you don't ever want to see him get hit, but is that a box that you need to see ticked before he moves up the levels? You're taking clean shots in sparring. It's like, you know, of course it's different with eight ounce gloves on, but, you know, when you're taking a clean shot from a guy that's 12 and a half stone, yeah, you know, like he's been boxing guys, he's been sparring guys that are genuinely middleweights. Like, so they're walking around at 12 and a half stone over their weights, so 12 and a half stone, and they're hitting him on the side of the head, and he's got no issues. Um, I've never seen him hurt in the gym. Um, he doesn't get hit clean, though. No. And, of course, that's going to be a, that's going to, that's going to be a, an answer that yeah that that's going to come up later on in his career because you're gonna I don't think people are going to test him at domestic level you know we're going to only see that whenever he gets to um, world level I believe anyway. Hassan Azim, of course, brother of Adam, also returns on this card. A bit of an, an excitable performance down in Bournemouth, I think it's fair to say. Got his opponent hurt in the first round and then unleashed a 155-punch combination trying to get rid of him. How important is it that he learns from that into this fight? 
Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Adam has got ADHD, and I think Hassan wouldn't be too far uh, from having it as well. You know, the two of them are, are, are young kids, and they, they sometimes lose their train of thought, and the same thing happens whenever they're boxing. You know, um, probably more so Hassan. He, he struggles sometimes to stick to, the, to just the basics. You know, he's, he hits someone and, and sees red a little bit. Um, but they're very young in terms of, you know, from a boxing standpoint. You know, they both haven't had... Adam had no um, senior experience, and Hassan only had a handful of senior fights. So it's all new, isn't it? And you're you're in small gloves, and you're hitting people, and you are going to get an effect. And, and so it's only normal for them to, to sort of rush in. But um, yeah, I think he's learned from that, and he's had a couple of really good sparring sessions where he's had to be disciplined because he's been in there with guys that, you know, big punches and 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 making sure that he has to stick behind the jab and not not get excited. Um, and that's what he needs. He needs to learn in the gym. Of course, he's going to have a few fights where he'll blow hot and cold. He'll have some great fights, so fights that you potentially don't think he's going to perform in, and then he'll suddenly surprise you. I think that's just Hassan at the moment. Um, you know, it's just getting. I need to get that consistency more. You know, more up basically. The thing is, is like when you got a guy that's 28, 29 years of age, he knows his body, or he or she knows her, uh, the body, and where they where they feel a bit flat they sort of are a bit more reserved um and then you know that, that's just all experience isn't it whenever you you, know, you 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 know when you're having your good days and when you're having your bad days and and then you kind of know how to tweak it so when you go into the fight you feel fresh whereas in, they're still in the mentality especially hassan it's just like every day he's going to graft he's going to put everything into the sessions and when he feels flat he comes out and, what's going on i don't Yes, there was better, but it's like you've only got, you know, you've only got X amount of goodness in your body, you know, before you before you get tired. So like, <laughs> you have to be quite selective of when, what days, you know, you you push it. You don't hit the pads and do trying to do 15 rounds a day before you're sparring. And the same thing on fight week, you know, you don't go out and start shadow box in your room at two in the morning before the fight. You know, you need to you need to rest. But these are all lessons that you have to sort of learn through the through the early ranks in the professional game. Just before I let you go, action-packed weekend of boxing. Uh, just going to grab your view on a few of the fights. Uh, first and foremost, this evening at the O2 Arena, WBO interim super middleweight title about Zach Parker versus John Ryder. How'd you see that one going? Great fight. Um, John Ryder. I mean, I've known him for a long time. We we both won the novices together back in like 2006 or something like that when we were like 17. Um, and it's great to see how far on he's he, he's got in the game. Um, he arguably beat Billy Joe Saunders. I thought he potentially beat him. Um, he arguably beat Callum Smith. Um, and, you know, he is a quality, quality operator. He shows up. Um, I hope I hope he gets a fair decision. But it's a very 50-50 fight. Zach, Zach Parker, the Parker, he blows hot and cold sometimes. He's had a couple of bad off nights and he's He's had some great performances as well, so I think it's going to be a really exciting fight. I think it's one that John will win. I think he'll he'll control the pace and and, and win the fight. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes either way. Somebody that you've had in the gym just across London, uh, certain Jermaine Franklin boxes Dillian White heavyweight bout. Dillian White coming off the back of that stoppage loss to Tyson Fury. You've had Jermaine Franklin in the gym sparring Daniel Dubois. How do you see that one going? Could there be a potential upset brewing? Heavyweight boxing can always be a potential upset. Uh, upset is he a big enough one one punch sort of knockout artist to, to knock out Dylan White I'm not too sure um, it's tough I think it, it I think it will go a few rounds but I think he's he's not busy enough you know he's happy to give away rounds and he's happy to to sit behind his defense um, so I think I think Dylan will probably either get to him late or or beat him on points and last but by no means least, in the wee hours of the morning tonight, the WBC 140-pound title, the vacant title, is being contested between Jose Zapeda and somebody you know very well, Regis Progre. How do you see that one playing out? I think Progre is going to knock him out. Um, I think Progre is, is uh, an extremely good fighter. Um, the way to beat Progre is to jump on him. If you looked at the Josh Taylor fight, you know we sapped him. We sapped all his goodness from... Literally the first bell, we, you know, the tactics were to go in and shorten the range because if you stand off, you're getting hit with, with hard shots at distance and, and Progre dips and sort of, he likes to keep it long um, and keep it at his own pace. Now, Zapita can really punch, but he can also 
uh, be a bit lazy at times. And I think if he's if it comes down to a, a sharp shooting contest at distance, I think Progre will have his number. So um, and also he can bang Progre can. So uh, but the two of them can punch. But I just think I think I'm I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, Progre potentially stopping him. Where does Progre rank? I mean, you, you've had Luke Campbell against Vasily Lomachenko. You've had Carl Frampton against Leo Santa Cruz. Where does Regis Progre rank in, in the opposition? I think it's probably the best opposition that we've beaten um, in terms of from our gym. Like, I mean, you know, Leo Santa Cruz was a three-weight world champion. It was a great, he, he, was, he was a good fighter and all, but he wasn't a standout. You know, he wasn't like a, a big puncher. Uh, on paper, he probably would be a better, you know, because he's won one more, uh, more world titles. But, um, but in terms of like elite level, I think Progre is a much more elite fighter um, in a much more competitive weight division. You know, you can be be a bantamweight and and super bantamweight and featherweight world, world champion and not have huge fights. You know, and not have you know he didn't he never boxed Rigondo. Santa Cruz didn't. You know, he never boxed anyone that was an elite fighter until he box Tank Davies um, so so yeah I think Progre is probably the best fighter in terms of obviously we, we've lost to you know, Lomachenko but in terms of our wins it's probably the best one we've had and absolutely lost uh, Chris Eubank Jr. versus Liam Smith uh, that was announced I think a couple of days ago now for January how do you see that one playing out? I think uh, Eubank will, will be too much for him too busy um, and he loves guys coming to him. You know, Liam's had some good wins recently. Obviously, beat Fowler, um, and then he went out and beat um, Jesse Vargas. Um, his last fight obviously wasn't, you know, w wasn't a, a massive name or anything. But he's he's got good momentum, um, and yeah, Eubank Eubank hasn't looked himself the last few fights. But if the old Chris Eubank Jr. turns up, I think. That's a perfect style for him. He loves guys like Nick Blackwell, loves guys like Spike O'Sullivan that just walk in. Um, and you know, I know, I know that Liam supposedly dropped him with a body shot, so he's going to be right, riding high on confidence when they sparred when when uh, Eubank come up to Gallagher's gym. So it's going to be tasty. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be tasty. But I think if Eubank gets his punch volume back to where it, it used to be, I think it'll it'll be too much. For him. Okay, well, Shane McGrigan, always a pleasure catching up with you. Before I let you go, Ryland Charlton versus Adam Azim tomorrow here, tomorrow afternoon. Almost made the same mistake as Andy Scott. Tomorrow afternoon at Alexandra Palace. How does that one end? Adam Azim, I believe, will knock him out. Um, and I think it will go halfway. I, I, you know, I think it's... I want rounds. That's why we we chose this fight, and you know we're going to have to try and get rounds out, out, out of Adam. But when he's got those small gloves on, and he's sharp, and he's making you miss, making you fall in, and he's and he's punishing you, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes early. But I think you know I think we're going to I think Ryland's got enough about him to to get through the first couple, and I think he'll probably he'll get tired and he'll get knocked out. Shane McGuigan, thanks very much for speaking to ID Boxing. Cheers.